Hi there. In this episode, Music Gear Market, Digital Synthesizers. This is one of my favorites. Today we'll be taking a look at the used market for selected digital synthesizers. I'll be looking at a set of digital synthesizers, discussing their specifications, the good, the bad, and most importantly, pricing. You'll get my opinion on what I believe is a good price, a bad price, and more. Let's do this. In today's episode, we're going to start by looking at the ESQ-1. Now, in this first listing here, it says it's rare, but it also shows that there's 112 results. Now, not every one of those results is going to be a synthesizer. It'll be an accessory or a part so that you can fix a unit. But $1,700 is just ridiculous. A good going rate for this synthesizer is about $400, 450 for one in really good condition. So let's see what we have down here. Here's one in Crowley, Texas, $225. That's a really good deal, but I've I looked at this one already and the display doesn't work, so we can avoid that one. Here's one that's non-functioning. Here's another one that says very good. Let's take a look at this one, North Carolina. Cosmetically, it looks very good. Now, there's a cartridge slot over here, and a lot of 80s and 90s units do have cartridge slots, and you want to make sure that the little door here that's spring-loaded is still attached and working. Don't assume that it's there if a cartridge is inserted and they've taken the pictures. Ask them that the door is still there and that it still works because it protects the internals from dust, and you want to make sure that it's working correctly. Okay, this one looks in pretty good shape. One thing I've noticed about these is sometimes these screws right here on the ends can become rusted out, and that's both ends. So you want to look at those on ESQ1s. You also want to look at the silk screening and make sure it's not cracked and it doesn't have any major wear on it. And this looks pretty good. I wouldn't say it looks great, but it's a 40-year-old synth. Hopefully they have at least one picture with the display on so we can tell that it's working. Looks like it comes with a case. So we didn't get one with a, a picture of the display working. So I might call the person on that or I might just avoid it. Let's go up a little bit. Very good. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Excellent. 450 with $99 for shipping. Or let's just call it 100 bucks because it's 99.99. This one looks like it's in very good condition. This one has a cartridge inserted, so you'd want to make sure that the door is actually there and still works, and you could ask the person. Based on the overall condition of this unit, the door probably is there, but you want to make sure. Comes with a soft bag, that's nice. Comes with the cartridge. Tiny little scratch there, a little bit of dust, nothing that you couldn't live with, I think. There's the display, and it's working, and it looks good. It should be bright like this. And Sonic used fluoro displays on a lot of their 80 cents and beyond, and I really like these displays. They're nice and clear, easy to read. They were probably great if you're working live. I never owned an Ensonic when I was playing live, but it's a very nice display. This is a nice clean unit. These screws still have the black finish on them. They're not rusting out. Back panel looks clean. Oh, that's amazing. Look at the bottom of that panel. Unless it's been resprayed, that is probably one of the cleanest bottom panels I've ever seen. And we can see at least three of the little feet are on there. I'm sure the other one's on there. They probably would have told us. Yep, there it is. And these are bolted on feet, and I like these. Cheaper since just have them glued on these days. You get a pedal, and it's in Sonic branded, which is nice, and there's the case. Yeah, this would be the one I, I would probably make an offer on. 450 well, they're not asking for offers, they've just got a flat price. But this one's in nice condition. I would ask about the dust cover and that would be it. 
and then I think I would probably buy this unit if I were interested in an ESQ-1. Now there's also an ESQ-M, which is the rack mount module, and some people want a rack mount module. But this uh, unit had a pretty nice keyboard on it, so this is the one to buy here. Don't pay those crazy high prices up here. What are we looking at here? $1,700. That's, that's just ridiculous. All right. Next up, CZ5000. This is the top of the line of the CZ keyboards from Casio that use phase distortion. It's not quite FM. It's definitely not analog. You have to listen to it and see if you like it. The nice thing about the CZ5000 is it has a lot of buttons on it. And it has a chorus and it has a sequencer. This was their top of the line. Let's see if we can find one that's in pretty good condition. I think I already looked at this one and there was reasons not to buy it, not to mention it's local pickup only. This one's in Paris, France. We'll take a look at it for our um, French friends. Uh, we can make an offer. Obviously, if you live in the US, you wouldn't want to make an offer on this. Shipping would be cost prohibitive. It's missing a, a slider here. There should be a fader cap right here. This is for the chorus and this is for the volume. So that is missing. You might be able to source one from a company like Centaur, or you might just be able to find one on Amazon that would fit the spine that's in there. It might not match this one, so you might want to buy two of them and replace both of them, so at least they look the same. It's unfortunate it doesn't have, have it because it looks in otherwise very good condition. You get all these buttons on, on this unit, which make it fairly easy to program. Let's continue on, see if we can find anything else that looks like it might be a really good deal. I think I looked at this one before, and there's just one problem with it. This one looks very clean. It's U.S.-based, so if you're in the U.S. and you wanted to buy a CZ5000, this would be a good option. Let's take a look at some of the close-ups. This or has the fader caps on it, which is nice. Those do seem to be missing a lot on these units. This is the one problem here. This portamento button has a has a kind of a, a slice in it. And I think that's probably actually a gash based on how it looks. It, it's lucky that it didn't really affect either side of it. There might be a little bit of something there. But if you could live with that, this would be a nice unit to buy. You might be able to source this part from somebody that's parting out one of these units that doesn't work anymore. Here you have your sequencer stuff over here. So this is a pretty nice unit. Back looks pretty clean. Yeah. There's a cartridge slot, and it looks like it still has the door on it. These are pretty big cartridges, too. They're beefy. You might not be able to find them anymore. It, it's probably unlikely, but you can always use system exclusive to load your sounds. All right, so this would be an option. $240 is a lot for shipping. It's a pretty heavy unit, but not $240 worth. If I were going to buy this, I would offer them about $450 if I was going to pay $240 for shipping. And I would also ask them to reduce the shipping to like $120. I think half of this is reasonable. 240 is way beyond the pale. All right, let's look at the next one. CZ3000. This is essentially a 5000, but it doesn't have the sequencer. I owned one of these for a while, and it was an okay synth. I'm obviously not in the market for one of these units, but if you like the sound, these are pretty interesting units. To, to play with and, and discover how they sound. Once again, the potentiometer cap here for the uh, chorus is missing, which is, which is unfortunate. But otherwise, it looks in pretty good condition. You know, there's quite a lot of LEDs on these, and all these LEDs light up, or they should light up. And you want to ask if they're still working. There's no rust on any of the screws there. This is a pretty clean unit. Display is pretty clean.
Yeah, so this would be a choice if you were looking for a 3000. However, I would I would advise you if you're looking to get into phase distortion and you don't want to go with the 101, which we're going to discuss in just a moment, I would definitely go with the 5000. It's it's a much better value even if you're not going to use the sequencer. It's just a more desirable unit. So here's the 101. This unit will run on batteries. It's the same sound engine. It'll run on batteries. It has guitar studs on the end so you can wear it and run around stage and trade lead lines with the uh, guitarist if you wish. Let's take a look down here. Look at prices. Non-functioning. That's an OLED replacement display. Okay, JG's Bazaar. Let's take a look at this. It says very good use condition. So 325 plus only 25 for shipping. So that's very reasonable shipping. It's got a, a little bit of a blemish there and something going on here. But it looks in pretty good shape. There's the battery compartment. And on units like this, you want to make sure that the battery compartment cover is still there. This is true with the DX100 from Yamaha, the Korg Poly 800. Often the cover is missing, so you want to make sure that's on. What I always liked about the Casio series here is that they put these big, long kind of raised areas for it to sit on, rather than putting four little feet on it. They used a, a whole rubberized area here. They also did that on the tiny little Casio VL tone, and I actually have an episode on that. So that's kind of indicative of Casio. Now, I did read the description on this one, and the person says that there's a screw missing, and that's why they put the tape around it. I would be a little bit suspect of that. What, you can't find a screw? Have you gone down to Home Depot? They have machine screws down there. So maybe it's an easy fix. Maybe something is broken, the plastic may be cracked. I would ask them about that. But this one otherwise is a pretty clean unit. If you didn't want to deal with that, there are some other choices. I think a good price on a CZ101 is about 275, 250. So you might be able to make an offer here and get this at a better price. I think that's certainly possible. And you can look at these other ones and see if they're in slightly better condition and make an offer on them. Especially when there's a whole bunch of units here, there's choices for people. And when you have choices, that means there should be price flexibility. All right. Here's the CZ1000. And this is the entry level keyboard. This one is portable too. You can, I believe you can wear this one. I believe it has guitar studs on it and it has a longer keyboard on it. And it, it will run on batteries too. I just don't see any reason to buy the 1000, uh, especially at these kind of prices when the 5000 is just such a better deal. See what we got. Non-functioning. I wouldn't buy other people's problems. Stay away from that. This says good. Let's take a look and see what they think good is. $380, that's, that's just too much. But if you really want a, a 1000, it looks in really good condition. It looks like it has the power supply because the power supply goes in on this edge here. Since it has the studs on it, another one right there. You have the connections on the end so that when you're wearing it, it, it flows better. A few scuffs, some marks here, some chafing along this edge. You definitely want to look at the, the pictures. For a 40 year old instrument, it's in pretty good shape. However, if you're patient, you can always find one that is in excellent condition and usually for about the same price. The reason why it's got some rusting here is probably because some batteries were left in here too long and they started to leak. So that's also a, a possible concern, but it does have the rear cover. 
and it looks like the rear cover is in good shape so it's going to clip in there and stay on. Sometimes the unit has the rear cover but it, it won't stay in because it's it's broken in some way. It's got some some wear on the bottom but nothing horrible, nothing that's going to affect functionality. A 1000 just wouldn't be something I would buy. Go for the 5000 if you if you want the full keyboard experience and then go for the 101 if you want something portable to dance around your house and pretend that you're, you know, at Madison Square Garden. All right, finally, we're moving on to FM. The DX7, there's lots of ways to get a hardware DX7. There are TX816, which are these units here, and these contain eight TF1 modules. So that's a way to get a DX7. Now, if you buy one of these, you're going to have to use a DX7 or a computer to edit it or transfer sounds to it. You can't do it from this front panel. Also, each of these individual TF1 modules uses an XLR connector. They're mono, and so that's something to consider. You'll need to have a mixer or a audio interface that can accommodate those kinds of connections. A few years ago, as probably as recently as maybe three to five years ago, you could buy these for closer to $1,500. And about 10 years ago, $900 in bad shape and $1,200 in really good shape. This is really about the going rate now, about $2,000, somewhere between $1,800 and $2,000. You are getting eight DX7s in a rack. And the layering possibilities is amazing. Of course, there's other ways to get that now. You don't have to do it this way. Here's a DX7 Mark I. Now, I already looked at this one. It's an exceptional shape, but it's not worth $2,000. Of course it isn't. A used DX7 Mark I in good shape, and this one is pretty much in exceptional shape, but in good shape would go for about $450, not $2,000. And it wouldn't be my choice to buy anyway. So other ways to get a DX7 are the TX802, which is the DX7 II version in a rack mount. And to get the original DX7 in a rack mount, they didn't actually have a rack mount, but they had a tabletop model called the TX7. And I actually owned one of those for a while. And it was a great little unit. It was nice to have it and have access to DX7 sounds in a compact package. So if you're going to buy a DX7, my advice would be to get the DX7 to FD. And I explained all about this in my synth floor episode on the Yamaha DX7. It's the best 61 key DX7 in a hardware package ever made, the DX7 to FD. And here's one right here. $1,500 is ridiculous. The going rate in the US right now is a, somewhere between $795 and $895. They're getting harder to find. You can find them in other countries, Germany, you know, so these are other scents here, Germany, Portugal, and whatnot. But if you want the 2FD and you want it in the US, you're looking at probably 895, about this price here, sometimes 795. Let's take a look at this one. See what kind of condition it's in. It's hard to tell at that distance. We can see that all the keys are level. It's nice that people show that. There's the floppy drive. Back panel looks fairly good shape. Looks like there's some tape residue on there. Now, the drives can fail, so you definitely want to read the description. And, you know, there's a few little scuffs and marks. These units came out in 87, the first of them. So, just check and make sure there's no problems. Okay, this is a 100 volt model. Personally, I would avoid that. I just don't want to have to deal with an adapter. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. Looks in fairly good shape. 
Yep. You know, a little bit of edge wear there. That's, that's so minor. It bear, hardly bears mentioning. With the newer 2 version, which is what this is, you get these raised buttons on the original DX7. It's membrane buttons, and I personally don't like membrane buttons. Cartridge cover, uh, spring-loaded mechanism is still there, so that's looking pretty good. You also get a better display on this unit. It's 40 characters by two lines, and it's LED, not LCD. You also get an extra slider here. On the original DX7, there's a volume plus one slider for data entry, and on this one you get two. So you can kind of use it as a uh, keyboard controller. I think that was part of the idea. You also get breath controller and phones on the front, which is really nice. You do get quite a bit of interfacing on the DX7 especially the 2 model. With the 2 model, the FD, you get dual and split. You also get 16-bit uh, audio. It's a stereo output. It's just a very nice unit and of course you get the floppy drive. With just the D unit without the F here, you get the dual and the split but you don't get the floppy disk drive. And of course there is a replacement for the floppy drive to use thumb drives and then you can have access to many many sounds. Now I'm quite happy with my floppy drive at some point it may fail on me and I might wish to put a replacement in there but files load pretty quickly they're very small files so don't think that having the floppy drive replacement is really going to save you a lot of time. It, it really won't. So about $875 is a, is a pretty fair price. I think the shipping's a little high on this. This DX7 is a heavy unit for its size. It's a pretty heavy 61 note keyboard. I would say 120 would be fair and there's no offers being allowed here. As you go through this list you will find some other two FDs here. This one here looks pretty decent. Let's take a look at it. Looks in pretty good shape. It's got this plastic case. Cosmetically that looks pretty good. It's a shame they're not showing it turned on so you can check that the display is still bright. It's got the molded hard case. Anyway, I think that's enough it for the DX7. If you're going to buy a DX7, buy the 2FD if you want hardware DX7. There's ways to get it in software. You can get native instruments. They have FM8 and older, and then their older version of that software is FM7. You can also get DX for free, which is a free plugin that will run in most DAWs. And if you're looking for other hardware options, there's the Reface, of course, and their is the Kronos and I actually have an episode where I talked about the DX7 and actually put it up against the Kronos's FM engine and also FM8. Alright let's take a look at another Yamaha the DX5. This is essentially two DX7's in one package and it also has 73 keys. $2,999 is about the going rate. I would say somewhere between 2500 and three grand. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one right here. Where is this one? Well it's in Poland but we'll take a look at it. It's got a little scuff on it here so you can see one of the DX7 engines is running in E piano here and then this one's running E P and brass. It's got our two cartridge slots here and it looks like it's got two cartridge. It's got significant wear and this is not unusual. I've never seen, well I have seen a couple of DX5s in really nice shape but they were going for a premium. I think it was $4,999. So we don't get a lot of pictures here. Let's take a look at the other one. See what the other one looks like. Looks in fair condition. Looks 
like this person's tearing down their studio. Get two cartridges. Not a lot of pictures there. I'm not sure what's in the video, and I don't want to waste your time with that right now. But this is about the going rate. Most DX5s I've seen are not usually in especially good condition. If you want the sound of FM, 6 operator FM, which is what a DX7, a DX5, and a DX1 are, it's 6 operator FM, a DX7 is fine. And there's plenty of reason just to go with a, a, a DX7. And they made 160,000 of them, so there are a lot of them out there. Here's the DX21. Now we're talking about 4 operator FM. And this is a nice unit. This is probably the best keyboard for operator FM because the 21 has split and layer. There's also a 27 and we'll take a look at that in a moment, but it doesn't have split and layer. 500 is a little high, I would say. I would say a good price on a 21 is probably about three and a quarter. And sometimes you can find them significantly less than that. Okay, so we're looking at non-functioning. Here we have used fare, $89. Well, let's take a look at that since it's so cheap and see why they think it's in fair condition. Looks pretty good on the surface. Looks like the display is still working. Got some tape residue on here or something. No. Well, there's probably a good reason. The display looks like it's had some water damage or something. It looks like some water or something might have gotten underneath that. And the, the end cap is starting to come off. I would say avoid this one unless you're, you're looking for a puppy to, you know, help. <laughs> Let's see what else we got here. Fair, fair. Let's look for something. Okay, this says very good. Two twenty-five. Two twenty-five is about a is a good price for for one of these, and that's that's reasonable. Does look pretty good here. They're not giving us a lot of pictures. Oh, I guess they're trying to show us that this got damaged. Let's see if we can find one in 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 nice condition. That's not too expensive, though. Two twenty-five is not a bad deal. Very good, that's in Japan, France. What do we got here? Very good. Brooklyn, New York. 250. It's local pickup only, but let's take a quick peek at it. I'm not sure if that's dust or something happening. No, this is this is the, the finish wearing off. So I would avoid that one. I've seen that a lot on these. If it's in a humid climate, a lot of times the the surface uh, covering will start to degrade on on the DX7 series and the DX21 uh, and 27. Here's one in Illinois, free shipping. This looks in pretty good shape and I wonder if it comes with a case. We could read about that and if it comes with free shipping it's gonna cost them at least a hundred bucks to ship this. Looks in pretty good shape. Not perfect but not bad. Got some wear on the back here, but the Yamaha logo is, logo is still pretty good. And uh, It's hard to tell how much of this is just surface crud and, and how much of it is actually scuffs that won't come out. Got to ask them to take a little Windex and a soft cloth to it and then send you another picture. It's nice that it comes with a case. Case alone is probably worth 120 bucks used. So that's that's pretty nice. 279. You can make an offer. You could offer them 225, you could settle on 240 or 250. And this would actually be pretty decent for a four operator FM machine. All right, let's move on. The DX27, remember the DX27 is not as good as the DX21. It doesn't have the split and layer modes that the 21 has. So 450 is just a little bit high here. Let's see what we can find. I've seen these for like 80 bucks before. So let's see. 
154, non-functioning, that's not going to help us. Very good. Paul's Gear Bazaar, 160 plus 50 shipping. 50 is not bad for shipping. I would say that's pretty reasonable. It looks pretty good in that picture there. Here we go. We got some upfront pictures, some close-ups. A little scuffing there and a little scrape. The display looks pretty read readable and these tend to get scratched a lot and this one doesn't look too bad. Looks like you get the box too. That's that's a real bonus. Most people have thrown away the box by now. Remember that box is close to 40 years old or 40 years old. So this would be a good choice and you're getting the box. That is that's way cool. Ground ships in the original box. That's way cool. All right. So I think this would be a good choice here and so at $160, this is a pretty good value right here. Let's take a look at the DX100. I think this is one of the cutest little synthesizers. Whether you like the sound engine or not, I just have always really liked this. And if one comes up that's in excellent condition for about 150 bucks, I might buy it. $800 is ridiculous. This should go for about 150 to 220. But they do get a little bit of a premium these days. Here's one for 200. Scottsdale, Arizona. You can make an offer. $50 for shipping. Let's see what we got. Now this does have guitar studs on it so that you can wear it and run around the stage on it. If I remember these are mini keys so just be aware of that. It's missing a, a slider cap here. That's unfortunate. Once again you might be able to source that part and here's the uh, pitch and mod mod wheels and it's nice that they're on the top edge. I've actually worn one of these before and it's nice that it's r right there. It, it actually fits in your hand pretty nicely when you're wearing it and that's a good location for the uh, pitch and mod wheels. There's our power supply. We got a few scuffs on it. It's a 40 year old instrument. The saddest thing is it's, it's missing that uh, slider cap. But you could probably source something for it. This green button thing was definitely Yamaha's, you know, I, iconic look back in the 80s. And there you are. You got MIDI in, out, and through. Very generous on a machine like this. And then you have this tape interface port here. And I believe this is the contrast for the display. You know, rather than being a round potentiometer that you use, it's uh, one of these kind, which is kind of cool. Okay, I don't see the battery cover. That's the only thing that's letting us down here. If it's not included, I wouldn't buy it. Let's quickly read it. Battery cover is missing. Okay, so $200 is why it's, it's so low there. You might want to make an offer. If you were really good with 3D printing and you knew somebody that had one of these, maybe you could spec it out and print one but I think I would look for one with the battery cover. See if we can find one that's complete. Say this one is very good, but you only get one picture. So that's not helping us. See this one is very good. Got a few extra pictures here. That might be helpful. Got some scuffing and got some stuff going on in here. That might be some rust. Certainly a lot of dust in here. First thing I do when I buy something used is I just, I tear it down a little bit. I mean, I don't pull it completely apart, but I tear it down a little bit and clean it up. You know, get some of the germs off of it and just put it in better condition so that I can use it. Now we're getting, oh, it's expert tested, <laughs> whatever that means. Well, at this point, we're, you're paying a premium, so I, I don't think it's worth $500. I really don't. I think a fair price, at if it was in excellent condition, $350 with the battery cover in excellent condition. 
you know, this might be a choice for you if you don't care about the battery cover. A lot of people use duct tape. That's what I've seen on things like the Poly 800 and the CZ1000 when the battery covers are missing. But you don't have to settle for one without a battery cover. If you're patient, or you can make an offer on something up here that's in better shape, though these two here, which are probably on better in better shape, won't allow you to make offers. All right, let's move on. The DX9. The DX9 has essentially the same form factor as a DX7. It's a full-size 61-note key FM synthesizer. The problem is it's four operator. But if you want four operator in something that looks like a DX, DX7 but is actually a DX9, this is a way to go. Let's see what we've got down here. Non-functioning, avoid, very good. For $130, local pickup. Where is this? Akron, Ohio. Okay, it looks like somebody found this in their basement or something and wants to get rid of it. Yeah, it is an older board. Looks in fair condition. We're not getting a whole bunch of pictures on it, but it looks like there's some scuffing here and looks like the finish is not perfect, but it's 40 years old. We gotta we gotta be reasonable, right? What else do we have here? Once you're starting to get in the three fifty, four hundred dollar range, the DX9 just isn't a value anymore. At a hundred and thirty, that's reasonable. In fact, that's very good. I would say two two twenty five, maybe two fifty, two seventy five, is a good price on this keyboard. But once you get towards 400, 450, you're in DX7 territory. And unless you specifically want a DX9, there's just no reason to buy it because six operator FM is such better sounding FM. Let's take a look at one of these though. We'll look at one that's in very good condition. Hey, we'll look at this one in Germany, why not? It's $403, but if you're in Germany, got some kind of a sticker on here. Looks in fair condition. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Last but not least, on our FM journey, the DX1. You don't see a lot of these for sale, and, and the fact that there's two of them here is kind of amazing. They only made about 150 of these, so that's rare. On, on the, the scale of things, 150 units, extraordinarily rare. It usually is not worth a company making a limited run like that. I already looked at this one. This person's got some amazing gear here. I don't know who this person is. They're probably famous, but they've got some amazing stuff. So let's take a look at this DX1. This would be the one to buy from everything I've already looked at on it. Let's get an up front view. These are the cartridge slots here, and they have some kind of special cartridges loaded in here that I've never seen before that actually have a display on them. And it says that they're a multi-bank card. I've never seen these before, but they look high-tech and pretty fancy. And the big thing about the DX1, beside, I think this is Brazilian rosewood on here, which looks just beautiful on it. It has this big display up here that shows you the setup for the operators and the, and you can see the carriers and the modulators and you can also get a lot of other feedback here and that's besides this display here now this display just looking at it I believe originally it was LCD and this looks like an OLED display so it's been replaced I wouldn't say that that would necessarily devalue the unit if anything it's an it's a nice feature to have and the LCDs displays are going to eventually fail. That's a good looking display. 
So you get 73 keys and you get two DX7s inside this unit. This one's in really nice shape. It's absolutely beautiful. I like my DX7 just fine, but that is one very nice unit in amazing condition. If When you think there's only about 150 of these out there, a lot of them are going to be beat up. They were probably used in high-end studios in LA and New York, uh, maybe in Nashville as well and it's going to be less likely that you'll actually find one that is in this good of a shape. And obviously got a very young player here. A little bit camera shy. So if you were going to buy one of these, this would probably be the one to buy. We could just take a quick look and see if there's any problems with it. Needs nothing. Contact prior to purchase for an accurate shipping quote. $1,500 is, you know, pretty high. It's going to probably have to be shipped freight. And freight on this will probably be about $600. Somewhere between $350 and $600. If I lived anywhere within, say, 1,000 miles, I would get into my SUV and I would drive there, pick it up, and bring it back. This one is really nice. But anyway, that's it. I'm going to hand you back to the other Jeffy now. That's it for today's list. If there's music gear that you would like me to feature on Music Gear Market, let me know in the comments. Rest assured that I have a massive gear list that I plan to go through. I will be grouping gear in a logical manner, such as drum machines, audio interfaces, and romplers. From time to time, I may do a grab bag that will include a host of different gear in an episode. The plan, however, will be to group similar gear together so that you can compare and make good buying decisions. Hopefully I haven't wasted your time. Take care, and I'll be back in another episode soon.